welcome to the next revlog. Um, this is probably going to be a bit of a shorter one, but it's not going to be one of the short form content things that I uh, <clears throat> mentioned yesterday. Effectively, um, I've just written out my to-do list for the day, um, and I've been thinking the last few weeks with the sort of wall that I've hit with my uh, novel that I need to do a proofread. Um, that's what, what I thought a couple of weeks ago, since I just haven't written anything since then, and I'm meant to write something every week, but I've just not been able to bring myself to do it, because I felt that the story itself sort of a bit stagnant, um, and not up to scratch, because of it, I'm comparing it to the stuff that I'm reading and listening to, and it's just not there. And I don't want to make a subpar quality product. Um, if I want other people to read it, I want it to be worth reading. So, uh, I've been thinking, what's wrong? What's wrong? How can I improve this? And I think <clears throat> that it's probably a matter of not enough world building, or arguably too much conflicted world building, because uh, I started this world of Ataria are based on a nickname that I got as a kid, um, and which was Jimitar Simitar, um, and both of which ended in Itar, and so I was like, oh yeah, Itaria, that sounds like a kingdom name, if I ever get a kingdom I'll call it that, and it's like, effectively, grew from there. Um, with the Bogotar Dimitar being the leader, well, the Dimitar being the leader of the army, Bogotar being the taken name of the leader of the army, the king being called the King Atar, just colloquially called the king, the technical title was King Atar. It's very childish um, and should really be changed. But then I wanted to set a D&D campaign where I was writing the book because I thought to myself it would kill two birds with one stone, I would have to do less world building, but also, I, um, like, it was a story that made sense. So effectively, I had a couple alternate timelines going on, but I tried to fit them, the NPC sort of characters in both. So the big bad had D&D &D class feature powers, but I didn't want them to be directly in the book uh, and in my head they all got mixed up where Redman, the main character in the story gets taken along with the party that rolls into town and is given a quest by Devon, uh, Redman's adopted father, um, to go and check out the woods just north of the town because there's been uh, the, the cinder is called cinder because it's always warm um and there are cinder stones but there haven't been any cinder stones and it's starting to get cold so they are sent off to investigate because the rest of the place is just fields and nothing seems to be amiss but the woods it's a bit dangerous there's like some monsters that sometimes roam the hills on the way there um so it's like you can just go look around see if anything's up and they're sent to fix it effectively um in the D&D campaign, there was a Kirin uh, in the woods that effectively, like, controlled the localised weather uh, to a degree. It wasn't directly the only thing responsible, but it was partially responsible. Um, there were some other plot elements, but in case I ever run that campaign again, I'm not going to go any further. Um, and then, whereas in the book... Currently, uh, it's all higgledy-piggledy, but someone, kind of an adventurer, shows up in town to defend the town from a boar. Um, that's not why he's there, he was just with some traders, and the traders have been an integral part of the story in the book since day one. Um, even though, maybe, because the first draft, Redmond sort of became a bit of a Gary Sue. Um, trying to make sure he's got flaws and stuff now and that 
that's problematic, but I'm kind of rambling here. Um, I think the issue comes from how we were taught, well, how I was taught at school, because I did creative writing, I did in English literature, um, and in both of those, it was pretty much, right, today in class, we're going to write about this, or your homework is to write about this. Um, and then in the literature assessing, it was, what does this particular piece of rhetoric mean? Or how does this thing relate to the author's past, or history, or personal life? Because apparently everything has to do that uh, in English literature classes. Um, which was interesting and fun, even if it was probably a load of nonsense. Um, there's no world building there. And having looked at blogs and stuff of authors that I've read, all of them have these gigantic world building documents. Um, and so I think that what I'm going to do is instead of write the story this year, this year I'm going to spend the rest of the year, like we're nearly halfway through now, I'm going to spend the rest of the year at least once a week doing world building um, for a few hours. And today I'm going to read through what I've written of the story so far. I'm going to highlight good bits, bad bits, etc. And then I am going to put it away with the rest of the stories and stuff with a date on it um, as the most up-to-date copy 2021. Um, and yeah, I'll put it away in my giant folder. Is it in here? Yeah. I've got loads of... Oh no, that's not the right folder. That means it's somewhere in the filing cabinet behind the phone. Um, they have got a big folder with a bunch of started stories. Um, and is Red is the Redmond story the one that I'm going to do the world building on? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, my current D&D campaign has Anitaria in it. Um, <clears throat> and it's set, was going to be set in the same one as the Redmond story which still doesn't really have a title. Uh, I mean, like, the working title was The Tale of Ataria and the Devil Folk, um, and now I've just shortened it down to the working title is just Redmond, um, or Redmond, as his actual name is, but everyone calls him Redmond or Red, um, because I don't know what the title would be, uh, but the title isn't particularly important <laughs> at this stage. So, yeah, that's, that's just something that... I, I think is more important because I want to write a good book uh, and whilst I want to do it sooner rather than later rushing it wouldn't be a good idea and so I won't rush it effectively um, I've got my next non-fiction book that I can start hopefully soon uh, that's relying on the PT course finishing up because um, there's a lot of research involved, and I've got to do the other two parts of the PT course still, but once I've done those, and, you know, I've got to get everything signed off for the level two, and then do the level three examination stuff, um, once all of that's done, <laughs> then I'll be okay. So, yeah, that, that, that's fine, but I think the world building is far more important. I want to develop a comprehensive magic system, I want to develop a class system, I want to uh, <clears throat> sort of get people to check my currency system of... Um, I can't remember the, in, the medium bits, but I know that the... Um, they were, I'm pretty sure they were all like k sounds, so like crowns, and then the smallest ones were nicks and then knacks, but I think there was an in the middle one as well. Um, and I don't think it was half crowns, but that would be a pretty common thing uh, that would make sense. Um, maybe it's just different material crowns, like gold crown, silver crown, etc. Um, and that sort of stuff. Um, oh, but that is, if it is one of my sort of more fantasy based stories that I decide to flesh out. Um, it could be one of the more teen fiction um, style ones, 
which I effectively wrote as a fanfic of me and my friends. Um, 30,000 words or so when I was a teenager. Um, so I'd need to alter it. Alter it heavily, in fact. Um, but I did that once, so I, I narrowed it down to one chapter. Uh, heavily revised is still probably not great. Um, and that would that's also got a magic system that would need refining. Then I've got a short story that I wrote as homework in year six. It's about six A5 pages, handwritten, that I've scanned into the computer or typed up at some point. Um, which is the Diamond Warriors series, because it's intended to be a series. Um, I've got some sort of hell-based thing that I started once. There was a just a, an imagery thing that I wanted to do of introducing a protagonist by having them being pooped on by a bird. Um, like, whether that be their initial introduction or sort of just like later on after some stuff maybe after a time skip or at the, at the start of a chapter something like that um yeah i've got a lot of things Hang on. this is going to sound terrible this is not a short vlog i i apologize for saying it was going to be one um but if i can wait i'm just going to apologize for the sound here i think this is my fiction binder. And these are my fiction projects that I've started. So, what's this one? Ah yes, we have the many drafts of um, The Chosen Prince, book one, Power of Eklat Tha, um, which is great, but has next to no world building. What's this one? Um, you can tell this one's from school by all the doodles on it. Personally, I quite like this snowman with um, very, very long limbs. What is this one? Ah, right, yep. This one, I don't think I ever gave a name, but is the tale of Solomon Orpheus and his brother, Comma. And they also have a pet raven, but I don't remember if it's got a name. This is a parody song of Halloween, um, of Holiday, by Green Day, called Halloween. Uh, this one, working title, is Making a Monk in a Matriarchy, which could actually be the real title if I make it a bit more um, comedic. Not that I know really know how to write comedy um but this is a world building document more or less uh, it's a backstory for the main character more so than the actual thing this is also um the chosen prince series so i'll put that with that that's one that the, a friend of mine proofread whilst i was at school this one is Ah, Project Amalg Draft 1, um, from 2018. I never did a second draft, but it's definitely worth checking. This is Ember the Demon Prince, which I put a little note on that says, On hiatus, I wrote this a very long time ago. You can tell, because the first dialogue word is yo. And whilst I do still use the word yo, it's mostly just talking to myself. Um, yeah, I think it might have some form of potential, but who knows. Um, my handwriting is definitely scratchier than it is now. Like, I wrote this left-handed, and it's less scratchy than that. Uh... Origins of one of my D&D characters, I figured I love that D&D character, they're very flushed out, um, but their background and backstory never came up, so I wanted to bring it around um, and do more with it. This is that fan fiction about me and my friends that I mentioned. This 
is just labelled I don't want to resort to violence, um, which I assume is a story about a pacifist, pacifist, pacifist who is very um, powerful. So probably a typical anime mentor. Um, they're like, no, nah, bro, you don't, you don't want me to get angry because you won't like me when I'm angry. Um, this is another D and D character's backstory for a campaign that never happened. Um, this is a really, really old thing, which I probably need to read and check to see whether it's worth looking at at all. Um, uh, the Stone Revenge with the Diamond Warriors. Um, the Stone Revenge is book one, or chapter one of book... Chapter one, Legendary Men, of the book The Stone Revenge of the Diamond Warriors series. <sighs> My first attempt at writing romance. Um, it's not great. This is, once again, the story of Solomon Orpheus. Uh, the, I think I had an idea here where I tried to do a little bit of world building first, but it was just sort of a few notable, no, notable places and characters. So it's got um, the main character, Sol Solomon Orpheus. We've got Drogna Orpheus. Oh, who's Comma then? Well, apparently Comma is Drogna um, in, in this draft, which is probably the most recent one. Um, so they're brothers. There's Bert Oakfell, who is a Smith Scholar's inventor from a nearby town, because Solomon and Drogna live in the woods. There's Drakai, who is the brother's pet. It's Raven or a wolf. Not sure which yet, but they are the two coolest of animals. Uh, they're my two favourite animals, uh, though I do love bears as well. Um, and then there is Faye of Aura, Lady of a Lost Kingdom. Um, then there are Griswold Village, Peruna Village, and the Grey Woods. So that's a little tiny smidgen of world building, so that's good. And... There are two in this particular thing. Each of them are very short. There is Pyramid Academy and General High School. Both of which take place in schools. I think I'm going to leave them be for now. Uh, this is a monologue I had to do for creative writing at university. Um, I really like it. But it's got a lot of feedback. Or is this one that I did feedback? I don't know. Anyway, this is another Tales of a Mouth draft, um, which takes place in the same, on the same continent um, as the Redmond story would. And this is called Coughing, which is a um, take on something that happened in one of the D&D campaigns that I was part of. And that is most of, if not all of, my ongoing fiction projects. Um, at the moment. So, I'm going to read my stuff, and then I will make with more. What's this? Hey, this is the other Redmond stuff, the previous drafts. Ah, uh, I love it. I have Itaria questions, which are things that are important potentially for me, and a couple world building sort of documents. But, um, where? Yeah, there, so in the story, there's a noble family called the Yorks. And one of the questions is, how powerful are the Yorks? That can be politically, that can be 
personally. I need to know both, and it's no good continuing writing to the point that they show up if I don't know. And if I decide now, I might regret it later, like whilst I'm writing, I'm like, okay, they're this powerful now, and then later on I need them to be more, more powerful or less powerful, um, or it just doesn't work, then I am screwed. So yeah, that's my plan for the day. Um, I've also got everything else on my dailies list, but I want to do that as an update because this is a rather large decision in that's going to shape practice every week for the rest of the year at least. Um, unless I had to change my mind again, who knows. But it's fitting with the theme, the year of self slash depth. Anyway, this 20 minutes, nearly 21, so I'm going to go um, and I'll catch you cats on the flip flop.